It is another beautiful day in West Central Wisconsin, and welcome to episode 109 of Banging on the Drum. As always, please remember to like, subscribe, download, share. Even if you don't like, like us, talk shit about us, share us because of that. But I am your host, P Dog, joined alongside my co host, M Dog. And M Dog, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well today. I think I had a I had a good day. Downfall. I had a few things like this week that I had to do. Right, so we got back from Vegas on Thursday, and I'll get right into my unders. Like I have a few of them. Just got back back from Vegas on Thursday. The Vegas trip, fucking really good. Everything was smooth for the most part. Just one little hiccup in there, but if you're on vacation with your whole family, like one little hiccup is not that big a deal right no not at all i i see i yeah. was living uh proof of it but whatever keep going i i admire you families taking young kids on trips after this week but we'll hear about that later oh yeah so young kids on trips it sounds like you have a little something to talk about with that but my kids were excellent right so that could be an over is that like they were on the plane like watch their tablets, watch the TVs in front of them. No issues. Now at the game, my boys decided that they wanted to have a karate match. So we like, so the softball game I went to, like we're sitting in this suite, right? Like we have all this extra room. We don't just have seats. If we had just seats, I think my boys would have been better, but because we have the suite and we can like walk around and we're eating food and like just doing whatever the fuck we want they decided that they needed to have a karate fight for like four innings. Yeah, if you got a room to have a karate fight at that age, you got to have a fucking karate fight. <laughs> well, so that's not the, necessarily the issue. It's not just us that are in there. So like there's probably 40 people in there and like 25 to 30 of them are us. And then there's the other 10 people that like are my brother-in-law's like business associates families. Nickel right. Fritz, man. And like they had some little kids too, and some of their little kids were being a little bit wild too. But that was kind of my under for the trip is that they didn't have any desire to sit and watch this game. Oh, dude, who would like? As a, yeah, as a six and four year old, I get it. Like, I enjoy this game, right? And my, I thought my six year old was going to really enjoy it because during the home run derby, he was like going crazy. Who who are the biggest names? So just explain who's playing, and then I got yeah, so the softball the softball one. game is the um, the Golden Knights, who I basically know none of them, right? So Jack Eichel, I want to say Eichel, Eichel played. Yep. Oh damn, um, that's like a big name, I guess. Uh, and then so uh, Riley Smith is the guy that kind of started it and is running it. He just got traded to the Penguins, um, but Eichel did play. Who is uh, Cleghorn? No, not Cleghorn. Um, Coglin, I think, was the guy who was the most impressive power hitter. Jose Canseco played for the Raiders. That's weird. He, well, so the A's wanted to be part of it, so they, so they like jumped in because the A's are moving to Las Vegas. How's he doing? He got beat up by like a. 22 year old and rough and rowdy or something oh really okay i didn't know that um didn't wasn't doing great he had to have knee surgery like within the like the following week of playing in this game not because of the game but he was going to have knee surgery anyway so he didn't even run the bases uh he was not very effective at hitting home runs either but anyway so on the raiders side of it probably the big guy is max crosby last year they had josh jacobs they had Marshawn Lynch last year. I feel like there was another like really big name that was there last year that wasn't there this year. Dan Carlson was there. I could have so I was at Fan Fest when Dan Carlson was signing autographs, and I was gonna like my brother, but not the guy who runs it, but um, one of Kelly's younger brother, Sean. Him and I were gonna go up and ask like how good his brother is gonna be because. Dan Carlson is the brother to the Packers kicker, uh, Anders Carlson. And yeah. 
that we wanted to know that and we didn't care like if we could talk to dan carlson like it had nothing like they, that wasn't like positive for us but no i think that would have been fun for him to because i like, mean i'm sure enough shit. people know it but i'm sh- like as a kicker like i mean we got chris jackie on like no problem probably <laughs> just happy like somebody wants who, to talk to who him. in reality is one of the best packers kickers i remember i mean longwell and Crosby are both very, very good. Like, I'm going to give you that. But I'm putting Chris Jackie right there with those guys. I mean, that's – we've had three, but um, – yeah, Brett that's Conway. Our, <laughs> I mean, Brett, Brett Conway, Conway is bullshit. Year, but. Yeah. All right. And so I'll get into a couple other unders. So today I was – maybe not a couple, maybe just one. I thought I had a couple. But um, today I was doing some stuff on the side of my house, and it's like – always in the sun, this part of the house. And so I, some of my uh, siding blew off, maybe like early this winter blew up and it was just kind of there. And then I haven't had any issues with it, but it's up and I can see that it's up. And so I went up to like dick with that. Well, bees had built a nest underneath there, which is not necessarily ideal. And so I get up there and I'm starting to putz with it. And then I get stung twice. And I'm on a ladder like 15 feet in the air, which was a little sketchy. How bad does it hurt to get stung by a bee nowadays? I can't remember the last time I got stung by a bee, but I re- I think it was still when I would cry if I got stung by a bee was the last time I got stung by a bee. Yeah, I think most people are smart enough to stay away from bees. And like, I'm just not intelligent enough, right? Um, I wasn't happy about getting stung. Like it hurt. And then it also, <laughs> it hurt way <laughs> it hurt way more than like just right in the moment that they sting you right so like i went to like i went in my fridge and grabbed like a bottle of water after this and i just extended my arm and i could like tell that it was a problem right like that i when i moved my my body didn't like it either right that i was still moving after i get stung by this bee but I got stung in the neck and then in the back of my arm. And so the one in my neck, I was like afraid that that one was going to like make my neck super stiff, but it was okay. So just being a dummy was up on my doing siding stuff. Got stung by bees today. Not that, not good. That is funny because we were talking. So we went out on a boat in, in the ocean and my brother-in-law what we parked on this island so we could just like anchor down um let the kids do some stuff find like wildlife they were all about the wildlife they didn't they didn't care about like the the jet skiing and the things like that they just want to find like animals and shit which i'll have more on later but it was fun it's funny you got sent by bees because my brother-in-law saw a bunch of uh not stingrays but uh jellyfish and and he didn't tell anybody because it wasn't like where we were and he didn't want my sister freaking out that right. there was like jellyfish and I was like oh no I got stung by those and that was the closest thing I could compare it to but like I said I haven't been stung by a bee in a long time but I think a bee sting hurts worse than those from the little experience I have because I got stung by them and like I was in the Persian Gulf doing some catching a football and something jabbed me in the side and then everybody started getting jabbed. So, but yeah, it, it wasn't that bad, but. Did you guys have to pee on each other? We, we were doing that anyways, just for fun. So, <laughs> so maybe that's why it didn't hurt that bad. We were, we were uh, immune, immunized to. There you, uh, go. There you go. <laughs> the. The stings there. But do you got more for your overs and unders here in Vegas? And all you yeah, got so, is so uh, another another kind of under for Vegas is that I didn't gamble one dollar. Didn't stop at a slot machine, nothing. Yeah. I but you kind of go there as a business trip. You bring your family. I don't yeah. blame you. I, I think yeah. the only time I was ever in Vegas, the only gambling I did. I was trying to get in to a game of poker 
Now I can't remember where this was, if it was in Biloxi or if this was in Vegas. But anyways, when I was in Vegas, the only uh, gambling I did was the the poker machine, like the five card draw okay. machine. Yeah. So nothing too aggressive. And then so for some overs, uh, the trip went really, really smooth. I kind of explained that. Uh, today I got a fair amount of stuff done. Um. So I got the siding done. I had to go get some bee spray, kill some bees. Um, like I found at least three nests right up in the, on this side of the house too. And then I found one in my shed that I didn't take care of yet because I don't want to spray shit all over in my shed. But gotcha, there's a big one probably has like 15 bees in it. You got those suckers back. They sting you, you kill their family. Yeah, and so they still were kind of hanging around a little bit. And so I do think that bees need to have a little bit more respect for someone who murders their entire village. Yeah, I guess right? so. so. If I kill like 15 out of the 18 of you motherfuckers, just leave me the fuck alone after that. And I might have got the two that stung me too, right? <laughs> they might have died because they stung me. Or they might be flying over to another uh, beehive recruiting people saying like we got mass murderers, infidels infiltrating our home and we're going to keep on coming. Doesn't matter how many of us die. We're going to we're going to get that guy. Yeah. So that's that could be the case. I, I could understand that. But. Right. So like I feel like what I did was kind of like. I don't know. Like, it's like the same premise as dropping a bomb on somebody, right? Like, right? And just like, now, fuck off, right? I need to do something here. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but I got a, I got a fair amount of stuff done. And then uh, the railing on my deck broke, got that fixed. Had a good, like, overall pretty good week. I know what my other under was for the week. I had to work Saturday. And I that when I have to do that, that's always my under. So you come back Thursday. Did you work Friday and Saturday then? So uh, we got back on Wednesday at like seven. We got back in Wilton and then I work Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. You're a trooper. Yeah. Well, I don't like to burn up my leave. That's yeah. Much. Just, just to settle in. No, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Right, how was your week? My week. Or week and a half. Great week. So we're both we're both in good moods. We're both usually I feel like when we're busy, there's someone doing something that's like fairly stressful. But it sounds like we were both basically in vacation mode. Uh, Why we yeah. were pushing this one out, kind of last minute. We like to get out one one a week, but we both were busy with. Sounds like fun shit. Uh, you're going to Vegas. My whole family, or not my whole family, my sister's whole family came down so she has three kids her husband and her all came down to our place for a whole week nice. um which was awesome so that's definitely an over there i guess the under would be one under would be is like i had to work for the majority of the time uh they got in sunday i had monday and tuesday off so we got as much crap done as we could uh monday and tuesday went out on a boat, um, went to the beach. And then I worked the rest of the week, but we got some fun stuff in and I ended up getting off early one day. So that was, that was nice. But the under in this situation is my brother-in-law comes in to my house here and is just way more of a man than me. Like he fixed things that I just didn't think could be fixed. So like, all of my fans were apparently pointing. You know, I I forgot even that this was a thing that like fans could shoot up air or down air. Yeah, so they're so pulling she, like the cool air up. Is that the idea, or pushing the hot air down? So we're we're getting them pushed down now uh, to get the. So maybe he fixed it wrong. If that's the no, concept no, behind it, I don't think so. I think that. I mean, it's definitely more comfortable, like cooler when they push down on you, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 
And that's the goal, I would imagine. So he noticed that immediately, fixed all the fans in our house. So our landlord, I think I can talk shit about her on here. I'm I'm uh, fairly confident that she's not going to listen, but she'll like take like a year to fix anything. She's been telling us we're going to get this new mailbox. We didn't, we didn't even ask for a new mailbox. She just like text me one day and she was like, I'm going to get you guys a new mailbox. It's going to look real, real good. Now I kind of feel bad talking shit about her. But anyways, this has been like four weeks and like there's a new mailbox like laying on the ground <laughs> next to our old mailbox. And I just oh, don't really know, interesting. <laughs> know what, what's going on there. But anyways, Are you supposed like, to put the mailbox in? I don't think so. Um, yeah, maybe I'm the one missing the point there. So I'm yeah, going to buy you a mailbox. Here. Now you have to set it up. Yeah, that, that could be. But uh, we, we had the door that needed to be changed and fixed. Like we wanted our bedroom door to have like a decent door whatever whatever whatnot um the doors were like flipped backwards he noticed that he fixed how that was but yeah he was just what do you uh, mean the doors were flipped backwards yeah dude i was confused by by that statement too so uh apparently doors like only go in one so the the catch on the door so right the, oh, okay. Yeah. If if you like pushed the door, it would just yeah. open. Like you didn't have yeah. to twist. I got. So it. he he fixed that like very easily. I honestly didn't even know. I was just like, well, this door kind of sucks. Like it doesn't <laughs> lock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then like he's just switched the doorknobs from one room to another, which I thought I didn't even think of. Just a bunch of shit that I like didn't even think of that he made like way more convenient in like being there for two, three hours. Like, <laughs> just like, no, He's you like, can do this. Like you can just do this. And then we go out to the beach and, or out on the boat. And like I was saying, we were chasing like wild animals. He caught like a big ass freaking crab just with his bare hands. And like, this is just like the crabs in the movies that like if you get close to them they like square up on you like it's like they draw guns and like get ready to pinch you and stuff and he grabbed it and the thing just pinched the shit out of him but he's got a three-year-old a six oh no an eight-year-old now uh had a birthday and a 14 year old and he wanted to make sure they all saw it so this thing was just like uh just like clamping down on him and you could tell like hurt and he was like, he waited for my wife to come see it. And he's like, all right, guys, you guys all, all done seeing it? <laughs> like, like, it wasn't like he let go because it was like hurting him. He just wanted to make sure everybody saw it before. Right. Not like a show off move, but like to be like, hey, this is pretty cool. We like caught a crab with our right. bare hand. Um, but yeah, so that that was kind of uh, funny. Uh, part of the under and, and you know like that's that's my under my week was pretty good but another another one is our our little jack russell terrier corgi um whatever mix dog my my pal um does not do well with uh manic energy around him like okay he's just like You're talking he's a work yeah yeah he's not good with kids uh, that's a long way of saying that is but he's like a, a working dog and his job is to like protect everybody and make sure like everybody's like settled in so he's and kind of a herd dog right yeah with the corgi in him so like he likes stuff orderly he likes like he'll even like do his blanket like in his bed a certain way before he'll lay on it yeah so he's just like very need to stuff a certain way and so he was decent with the seven year old um real like the 14 year old he was like pals with but the the three-year-old yeah he was i think within the first five minutes he nipped his elbow so so then we were like ah oh, yeah we were like ah oh, crap well we're gonna have to do something about this they're gonna be here for a week so he would have to go like in and out of like muzzles, like 
or just a muzzle. And he was very good about it. Like he didn't care. Like it looked like he was fairly comfortable with it on. Like he could lick, he could drink yeah. water if he really wanted to with it on. So, um, but it, like, but, it's still like as a dog owner, it never makes you feel good. Right. No, no, you feel awful. But so when he nips him, right. So he nips him on the elbow. Is it to like get him in line? Like, was he like, oh, yeah, this shit? Okay. So I feel like I've heard of like herding dogs doing shit like that. Right. Mm -hmm. That like they try to like make sure that even like humans are where they're supposed to be. Like, so like if the kid's like running off in the wrong way, like they'll like try to herd them. Right. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's exactly what it was. And, uh, yeah, I have a buddy with a Moody is the type of dog it's called. It's, it's like a pretty rare dog, but it's like one of the best like herding dogs in the world. And this dude's like a big time runner. So uh, he got this dog basically to run like with miles him. with, with yeah. him, like at a very fast pace. But he's still getting a train. Uh, but that dog keeps when my wife and I go to visit, like he warms up to us like we stayed there for like a good three day stretch. And like, by the second day, he was kind of cool with us. Um, but he hurt, he would hurt us, like literally hurt us oh, interesting. For, for the first whole day. Like he has nipped me on the ass before. And like I turned around, you know, cause you never want to yell at somebody else's dog, but it, it did kind of hurt. So if, if my dog yeah. did that to like a, a little three kid, year old, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Like I imagine it was pretty bad, but. But I'll roll into the overs here. So with my family coming into town, uh, like I said, we did a bunch of cool shit. That, but then they brought Foss's hot dogs. So we're stacked up on Foss's hot oh, dogs. Nice. Stacked up on Spotted Cow. Way stacked up on Sundrop, dude. I got enough Sundrops to lose a zillion bets. Like I, I was expecting them to bring like a 12 pack of Sundrop. Did I they fly down or drive? They drove. They drove. Okay. And they got... I, nice van with like yep. compartments and stuff in there uh they convinced that my oldest nephew that uh spotted cow was illegal to transport over lines so they had like stowaway compartments and they were pre <laughs> pretending to be uh like uh, like alcohol uh, runners like yeah, moonshiners like moon or whatever yeah so i thought that was pretty funny um and then, like I said, uh, we caught crabs. Ain't sure as shit, dude. We taken the boat out. And we're asking because we're not going to like where we normally go to is like a part. It's called Crab Island. It's kind of a party place. And I mean, with kids, it's just not really not the place to be. But we, we didn't even think of that. I was actually thinking we were going to go out there, which is not here nor there. Long story short. Within the first five minutes of driving the boat, we had a dolphin just playing with us, like right next to the boat. So that was just super sick with kids. And then we turned the boat towards it um, and, and turned the boat off. Like, we obviously, we weren't trying to like hit it or anything, but and then it just like swam right under our boat and like kind of like ripped around and like played with it. Um, oh, very cool. but th then took off and then when we were at an island two more dolphins came up basically up to us i was going out in the water to see how close they would come to me and then my sister's like you know dolphins aren't nice i'm like i'm pretty sure they are they're like dogs in the water as far as i know but i didn't i didn't get too close like i wasn't gonna go anywhere i couldn't touch to play with them but if they came up to me and I was like standing with like only my waist in water. I was fairly confident that they couldn't. You could drown. take them. <laughs> <laughs> that I could choke them out. Um, yeah, I feel like I've heard that uh, dolphins are relatively docile in the water. I've heard of people swimming with dolphins, but maybe those are more trained dolphins than like. I mean, we, we've done one time a jet ski tour for dolphins. And we were like right next to him on jet skis. Like, I don't think anybody actually did get a chance to touch one. Right. 
But I mean, we basically could have touched him and like nobody, we had a guy during that and he wasn't like, oh, whoa, that's too close. Like he was just like, oh, this is pretty cool. Like they're coming pretty close to you guys. So, so wasn't too scared. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. It was, it was a great week. So like I said, normally when we're busy, it's usually like someone's got like a pain in the ass to deal with. And uh, this, this time it seems for me, especially it was, I was having too good of a time to uh, hang out with Mike and record one of these, but we're pushing out on the last day possible. It probably won't be edited. This will be the first one we don't get out oh, in a so? week span. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to edit it on monday so that's right yes yeah so yeah i think that's i think we're here. okay like i'm not i was actually thinking when i do the because i don't anticipate not doing the vegas trip i guess most most years right yeah For this that week and so i was kind of thinking like maybe we need to just take this week off every year because yeah, i want to be that I want to say that that was the first one I missed last year. Yep, that sounds and right. And was it after that that we had to do the that I did the solo one, or before that? There's always some times in the summer where like it's tough for us to get to. Yeah, I think the solo one ended up being when I like in April or something. Okay. Uh, when I had like COVID in the Dominican Republic. And I got stranded there for extra time, maybe. I don't know. Whatever. We won't. It doesn't really it. matter. But I just feel like in the summer we have, it's, it's, things get tough sometimes. So, yeah. Yep. 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 And then I guess my last over I'll go with is this is kind of an over for both of us. Shows on the rise, buddy. People are, people are listening. We had, 28,000 uh, views on YouTube. So that was a pleasant surprise. And then as far as this month, we have 287,000 downloads and 50,000 unique listeners. So 50,000 unique. Li so like in the last month, we have 50. Okay, I get it. So there's four episodes that came out in the last month. Okay, I was a little confused there for just a moment. Yeah, and and most of the stuff is on an uptick. I'm looking at our uh, stock right now. I wonder if I can do this. Uh, no, I'm not going to mess stuff up just uh, so our YouTube video can look cool. But yeah, our stock right now kind of, it, it's very volatile. Um, I think I would buy it though. So if you're out there, buy no, it. Tell, don't tell buy volatile about. stocks. Bad idea. Well, shit, dude, we would have been at 400000 and then we would drop off to about $80,000. That's and terrible. Now we're, That's a lot of money lost. Well, if you sold up there and then you bought back in when we dropped down to 50000 you'd be yeah, back. Nobody does that shit. That's like the, a unique thing to fucking be able to do. You'd be back near $300,000. And um, yeah, that, that's it. So, and then just minus three zeros from every number I said. And then and those are the real numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that would be fairly yeah. All right. So one of our uh, biggest YouTube fans, we've been getting some comments. Uh, my mother-in-law turned into our biggest fan. So Paula, I'm going to give you a fair warning right now. This is the part where uh, we started talking about sports uh, that you don't uh, tend to watch as much as we do uh, for for lack. But there is going to be one uh, Carlos Santana uh, reference in there, but it might be a different Carlos Santana than the Carlos Santana you know. Um, but yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. So she was commenting on her stuff. I thought I'd give her a shout out. Love you. Um, but yeah, you ready to bark about Brewers? Yep, yep. So I'm going to let you get into it, and then I'll just kind of add my two cents on things that I was paying attention to since I got back. Oh, yeah. I had some uh, uh, my oldest nephew and my brother-in-law watching some Brewers games with me, which made them 
quite a bit more enjoyable, I will say. So I like to do 10 games. So the Brewers are four and six in their last 10 games uh, coming out the gate swinging after the all-star game, which by swinging, I mean throwing. So they were pitching incredibly coming out the gate. But since our last episode, the Brewers are two and four. So it's been six games since our last one. And in no small part to the Braves just being probably the best team in baseball right now. They're freaking crushing it. They are an incredible team. Um, I think they have the MB- MVP in Acuna. I want to say, like, I didn't look this up, but I want to say at least seven of their guys on the team have over 20 home runs. So, holy power. God. Yeah, like power from front to back. I could be wrong about that, but I, I think I am right because Acuna definitely does. Uh, our boy Riley and Olsen uh, both, <laughs> both have over, over 20. Um, yeah, and some of their other guys do as well. So they, they can hit up and down that lineup. And the Brewers cannot hit with runners in scoring position. And that's been quite frustrating to watch. Um, so our solution to that problem was to go out and get Carlos Santana from Pittsburgh, who's hitting like 233. I don't know. I think it could be a little bit in response to uh, Rowdy Telez going down, maybe lighting a fire under Rowdy Telez's ass because he's going to come and play first base in DH. So I guess that's what we're looking for. It's definitely not the move we need to make to the to make it to the next level to compete with this Braves team. Um, but I guess it is a move. And I really, really, really want it to work out just because I like the Carlos Santana puns. Like, because you know I'm talking about Santana. Yeah, is, I, I, don't, I don't know that Maria, I knew that. Maria, Maria. I, I didn't know that his name was Carlos, I don't think. Yeah, it says it right in the song. So it should be his walk-up music if it's, if it's not. But... Yeah, and then we can change the lyrics. We got to come up with a song because it's like Maria, Maria reminds me of a West Side Story. So I already changed it to okay. reminds me of a Midwest story. Okay, that's and, a good move. And then we're going. Oh, yeah, and that reminds me. I got a brain drain for the end of the show, but you got to remind me. It's about the Midwest. Okay. Um, but yeah, like I said, pretty frustrating leaving just tons of runners in scoring position. And not even just that, it's getting a runner to third base with less than two outs and just coming up with nothing as many times as they did. I want to say in the Red Series, I mean, I know it was real bad. I have the stats up for how they hit with runners in scoring position. So in game one, they went two for 16 with runners in scoring position. That was the game where they were getting damn near a guy to third base every time with less than two outs and not getting them in. Um, shit, I probably should have had the final scores up to that. But they, they did win that one. I want to say Yelich walked it off uh, with a base hit. and so then 3-2 then, I think. Yeah, 3-2. Then they lose the second game where Corbin Burns goes six, gives up two runs. Our quality start didn't hold up there. They went three for eight with runners in scoring position. So I guess that's not awful. That was above 300, so I guess you'll take that. But then in game three, they go 0 for 7 uh, with runners in scoring position. But they do end up winning that one. Uh, I want to say that was a Tyrone Taylor home run. And then in the next series, they just get swept by the Braves which the flip or the script kind of flipped on them so they started pitching like shit but they started scoring some runs so they did score 18 runs in a three-game series which in our metrics that should be good to win you three games six runs a game but they gave up 29 runs and we'll just 
hammer the starting pitchers through this one. So Hauser starts game one, gives up six runs. Terrain starts uh, game two, gives up nine runs. And then Colin Ray starts game three and gives up five runs. So you got to give credit where credit's due. That Braves lineup is nasty. But if I could come up with an excuse for this, we were at a pretty bad point in our rotation to run into the Braves. I guess you could kind of flip that and say it's like a good point too, because then we're not, uh, you know, wasting Corbin Burns and stuff if we don't get the run support. But it, it was, I mean, you know, Hauser's been all right. Terrain's been just a wreck lately. Ray's been all right, but it's not Corbin Burns and Freddie Peralta. Um, I mean, we haven't had Woodruff for damn near the whole year. Uh, right. But it, it's going to be tough to beat the Braves, no matter Ever. what you have. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, if we do get into a playoff series and we have Corbin Burns and Woodruff and Peralta, I think, you know, there's a puncher's chance in that series. Um, well, spe- so I guess looking at like the future of the Brewers, are they going to like try to make a move at all? Will they move yeah, to have some like really highly touted young outfielders? Will they try to move anybody like that or, or yeah, what's your kind of opinion on that? I mean, one one thing is so with the extra playoff spots that been that have been added uh in the MLB like there's just not as many sellers as there used to be yeah like when they're like hey i need to you know either get the wild card or win you got one wild card spot and so that in general is going to make there be less sellers and then on top of that if you look at the standings as a whole there's a lot of tight races going on so like uh the cubs have kind of been searching their four games back of cincinnati uh in the nl central we are a half game back of the reds after that uh brave series so you know there's three teams in the central that that have that um the al east Seems to be everybody's like a pretty, everybody's like five games above five hundred. Yeah. So, yeah. There's so let's say within six games. I mean, if you go within ten games, that whole division's in it, which I I don't think that's a bad thing to do. Uh, you go to the AL Central. They have three teams within ten games or three teams within six and a half games. Uh, the Braves kind of ran away with the National League East. Uh, sorry, I'm bouncing around. AL West, uh, four teams within six games of the division there. Um, yeah, so I mean that. I don't it's think there's going to be. Right now. I, yeah, I I just don't think there's going to be many moves made. And then it sounds like Shohei is going to. It sounds like they must have some sort of deal in the works with him where they don't plan on getting rid of him. And like, he seems to love LA from what I gather, which is not much information. So who knows, maybe someone will offer, make them an offer that they can't resist. And then uh, he'll be gone. But I just don't fully know, you know, where we're going to pull this guy from. And then some of the guys that I see when I'm watching my recap rundown stuff, it, it, lots of young, good players that teams just aren't going to part with right now. Yeah. Like I'm sure they're going to be on whatever those baseball contracts for, right. you know, still facing like arbitration for the next yeah. six years type deal. So I guess that's a long winded way of saying it is I don't think, I don't think there's much for us to go out and get. And on top of that, if we have to unload 
some of the stuff that we need to unload. I mean, we definitely need to out unload a outfielder because we're going to have Yelich, South Frelix, been lighting the world on fire, whether it yeah. be defensively, offensively, since he's been since he's been up. We did ask him to come on the show uh, before the season started, so give us credit there. Um, I would just want credit for that. So, so give me credit. Yeah, for that, that was you. That was you that did that. <laughs> yeah. I did not. Uh, yeah, I did not have the foresight uh, there. So maybe we can try to get Jackson. Uh, I want to say Churl, but that's the dessert. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, Jackson Churl. Okay, I feel we like might that's... be saying it. I was definitely saying. So I was all saying Sal Frolic, which I think I right? just did. It's Freelick. Yeah, at least that's what the announcer said. The first game he was up, I was I had it on in the office I was working. I was like, this guy's such a dumbass. They keep saying free <laughs> like, and it's frolic. And then everyone kept saying free like, and I was like, oh, okay, but that's because that. the announcer said free like, right? And so maybe we just don't know. No, I'm pretty sure it's free like. -E There's definitely guys that they fucked up before, though. Like, yeah. And so should like, we go keep correct them like four years later? Should we keep saying it the way I say it and just hope we're right? No, I'm sure we're wrong, but that's not the point. Yeah. We can say it the way you the way you said it. But Freelick, Frelick, however you want to say it, has been a great addition in the call-up uh, department. Sounds like Garrett Mitchell isn't going to be ready to play until like mid-September, but Garrett Mitchell came up last year and was lighting the world on fire. Honestly, I just hope I'm super wrong about this because I love the way the dude rolls, but Joey Weimer just, I, he doesn't agree with me. I Is he the odd man seen, out? I would think so. Like I would be thinking that's the guy that you would be able to part ways with. And they don't, and he starts every day because he's an incredible center fielder. I have dumbly said I don't think he's like that much of an X factor in center field but he must be and I've seen him make incredible plays incredible throws and I've came around on his defense I have seen him look like a dumbass in the outfield I know that that's not uh, me making something up but I just don't think the juice is worth the squeeze if we get an outfield with Yelich playing the way he is, um, put Garrett Mitchell or Sal uh, Freelich in center field uh, the way that they hit, the little bit that they've hit since they've been in the major leagues. I mean, yeah. both the guys probably have less than, well, Freelich definitely has less than 50 games under his belt. I would say Mitchell probably still has less than 50 games under his belt. I could be wrong about that and i'm trying to when chiro I, I don't think chiro's maybe he'll be a september call-up this year um so yeah, i guess probably, there's i would guess he probably would be being he's a double a guy though maybe not yeah and i am hopefully going to see him next weekend for real he's this get time. Pushed he's not going to triple A just yeah. like when you get there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That that's what will happen. But so I, I guess a, I do have a oh. question for you that has nothing to do with baseball. Uh so you're going to see them. So you're in a different are you guys moving back to Jacksonville for the school year? Or not Jacksonville maybe, uh Tallahassee for the school year? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you guys will be out, off the beach town and back in yeah. All right. Yeah. I should have asked you that when you were like talking about your vacations and stuff, but no, no, no. All good. I thought so. I thought that was the thing, and then I was like, well, maybe they are there long term if she's buying a new mailbox and like all this other bullshit. But no, 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 we'll be back in Tallahassee. But I'm getting back on the Brewers here. Um, after getting swept by the Braves, let's go to the good news that we have. Woodruff is making a rehab start in Nashville Tuesday. Brian Anderson, who I know struggled a little bit, uh, but he's going to be 
getting a rehab start sometime this week in uh, in Nashville as well. And then Wade Miley will be reinstated from the 15-day DL, and he's going to start in Washington on Wednesday. And that being said, is we get to go from playing the Braves to playing Washington, Pittsburgh, Colorado, and the White Sox. So, like I said, the, the league has been pretty competitive, and it is baseball, but those are three, four series until we get to Los Angeles, the, until we get to the Dodgers, um, that we could go on a pretty good run yeah. here. Um, so, so that is good. But that is all I got for barking about the Brewers. You got any questions? Feel like um, no, uh, encompassing like- it. The thing that I saw is that, right, so out of, I think last Friday we started playing the Braves, had one series from like probably Monday through Wednesday, and then this Friday we started playing the Braves again. And that's just a super rough stretch. And the In between there was Cincinnati, the division leader, who we've played well against all year. I'm not – Yeah, like, I want to say they, they – the season – and they said it at the – end of the game but i want to say we're like 14 and 4 yeah or we've some, been whoop, some, whooping the yeah. shit out of cincinnati all year and that might have been the last series with them for the for the season or maybe one more so we're going to end up winning that series for, yeah no for the that's the that's the last time we see the reds all year we're yeah. done with them and so i actually don't like i think we went 1 and 5 against the braves but the braves are the pretty easily the best team in the NL, I think. And so uh, I'm not overly concerned about that record when it comes to like whether we can make the playoffs or whether we can make a push to go even kind of deep in the playoffs. And then without at least one for sure playoff starter, right? And then Wade Miley's out. I wouldn't ever imagine that the three guys – I guess Hauser would be a guy that we push we'll out, roll out up. against him. Yeah. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna if he's not starting a in a game in the playoffs, he's yeah. going to be pitching in a game in the playoffs, right? He might not start, but he'll he'll pitch. He'll be in the bullpen. We'll use him, but the other two, I don't know if would even get used. Yeah, and we definitely got to pull someone on here, whether it's my boy Chip or um, the Brewers Raptor. And pick their brains on, you know, who who you going with. So I think if you need a fourth starter, that's that granted, no one gets injured again. If you need a first fourth starter, who are you going with? Because I think it's pretty easily your three that you're going with right now is gonna be Burns, uh Woodruff, Peralta, if Woodruff comes back all right. And then you get to choose between Miley, Hauser, and Ray uh, for your four starter, if you need a four starter in that situation. And I think Freddie Peralta could maybe ride the fence with that. Um, From what I've been seeing, he's been pitching pretty damn well lately. So it looks like he's going to be the third guy in there. Uh, I guess he's six and eight on the season, 4.46. ERA um, last does it give me like a game? So his last few games. So he did have get shelled against the Braves in the last series, but so maybe everybody's just getting fucking shelled against uh, uh, the Braves. Well, so I mean, the Braves' offense is extremely good, and If you're not really on your P's and Q's, they're going to get you. That's the way it goes. I do want to fact check myself just out of like pure curiosity of how many guys they have with over 20 home runs. So they have one, two, three. Matt Olson has hit 35. So four, five, 
Did I say that five guys with over 20 home runs or did I say more? Because they have five guys with over 20 home runs. You thought it was they, the majority of their lineup, which I guess five is the majority of their lineup, right? Yeah. So nine guys that are probably playing most of the time to over 20 home runs. I don't know if you have like seasons like that and that we still have two months left. Mm-hmm. And like I said, Olsen 35, um, Acuna 24, Austin Riley 24, Ozzy Albies 24, um, the, Azuna, or so Marcel Azuna, their DH has 22, and then their catcher has been shit in the bed and he only has 17. And yeah, then they're what a field. piece of shit. And then their left fielder has 16. Whereas, all right, I just want to give the people something to compare it to. Sorry, I'm going yeah. down uh, stats, uh, nerdy shit right now, but uh, that's like the 2008, like 2009, 2010 Brewers. Like they had so many guys that would hit bombs. So, whereas right now the Brewers leader in the clubhouse is Willie Adamas with 17 home runs. Christian Yelich has 16 home runs. Joey Weimer is in third with 12 home runs. And Roddy Tellez, 12. So, yeah, you know, we don't even have one guy over 20 home runs. And they, have and they got five. five. Yeah. yeah. And so, like I said, I bet I bet you if you look at most teams, I'm not saying they're like one or two guys over 20. Because guys that for guys to hit even 25 bombs in a year is pretty impressive. Like, yeah, it's impressive if a guy is in the 2020 club, right, or whatever. I mean, it's not unheard of, but it's it's impressive to do. And so I think at this point in the season to have 20 home runs, like I feel like you are like one of the elite power hitters in the league because you end up with 30 to 35 because you have two months left. Maybe not quite that many, but it's ridiculous to have five guys over 20. 20 home runs no it is insane and i like how you said the the 2020 club where acuna has 51 stolen bases this year so he's he's on pace to be in the 40 40 club which i want to say maybe bonds is in i don't even know if bonds was i think uh, bonds and griffey okay but i'm not positive on griffey i'm pretty sure on bonds yeah um I would have to fact check that, but I am going to need to take a quick pause here and then we'll get to the Packers stuff. So that was our quick uh, e-dog trying to kill a cockroach that disappeared in the house uh, break. Um, But we'll get back into this. And I think Mike got a little data on the 4040 club. So give it to us. Can I try to name a couple? So there's four. And so if you can get them, I'll be awfully impressed. Go right. ahead. So Barry, Barry Bonds is definitely one of them. Yep. Uh, Ricky Henderson definitely didn't do it. He didn't pop he, 40. He definitely did not. A teammate of his, I believe, did. Okay. So Jose Canseco? Yep. Okay. That's two. Um, I'm just trying to think of Griffey. He's probably three. If, nope. No Griffey. Um, can you give me an era? So they are all from our era of baseball. Okay. Uh, so mine. I'll say mine. Um, except Canseco. Okay. So Canseco's happened in 88. That's mm-hmm. why I'm not saying it. But he was definitely like a, a huge part of like baseball when I was growing up. And I want to say someone's done it semi recently. Uh, I... No, not really. So like all like superstars from over 15 years ago. All right. I think all of our listeners had enough time if, if they were trying to think of them. So give them to all me. Right. I don't think. So we got I... a rod okay. with the Mariners with the Mariners in 98, 42 bombs. 46 stolen bases. And then Alfonso Soriano with the Nationals in 2006, 46 bombs and 41 stolen bases. Yeah. A Rod seems obvious to me. 
Yep. Huh. But like uh, only a young A Rod, like an old A Rod, didn't steal any bases. Yeah, but even if you told me, I guess he didn't. He didn't bash dingers like that. Maybe for Seattle, he did it with Texas, right? I, I mean, so Seattle, he's at 42, 42 home runs, I think. Okay, so Pretty he did it good. with Seattle. Right in the middle of the like juicing era, though, like all those guys kind of land. I guess Soriano might not. Yeah, but he's he's a fringe, fringe guy. But whatever, we we're all in favor of uh, juicing on the podcast. Well, you're definitely oh, yeah. in favor. Of yeah, yeah. So I like I think most sports would be better with juicing, and then let's not let's not go down. Yeah. <laughs> let's not get go down that one again. But yeah, I mean. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what Acuna's pace would be right now, but so I think that I think that he's gonna like to end up with in the forty forty club. I think would be very very difficult, right? So you said he is at twenty two or twenty four bombs, twenty four homers. So I think so. He's hit twenty four in four months. So to hit sixteen in two months would be imp- pretty impressive, especially at the end of the year. Like the end of the year, guys generally just get tired and kind of yeah. like just aren't as efficient. I want to say the Brewers last game was game 100. So yeah. Oh, easy math here. Uh, the Braves have played 103 games. So Okay, so they got 59 games left in order for him to hit 16 home runs. That's like pretty good. That's pace. going on a tear. Yeah, that's going on a tear. Yeah. So he'll he'll be in the 30-30 club. Uh, I think he's going to be the MVP as well uh, this year. But but are you are you sick of the the stat wormhole that I'm down, or can I go to the yeah, yeah. lead leaders? Yeah, let's, let's, Okay, so let's, let's move on. Let's move jump on. on to some uh, Packer stuff. And go so, for like, and everything I've been hearing about the Packers is that Jordan Love is having like a pretty good camp that he's improving every day. I have seen that he can hit the net thing that he missed in his rookie season, so his accuracy must be significantly better now. I don't know. Um, I, I've heard a lot of positive things about wide receivers, and then I've ho- heard a lot of positive things about uh, Van Ness and Kenny Clark. Like Kenny Clark's old man's getting out of prison, and so like they think that he might have a ridiculous year because – relatively like motivated by his his old man getting out of prison that's yeah that's pretty cool um so i'm gonna i'm gonna credit my source here and i'm gonna read his five headlines so it's uh wes uh yeah good job look at you wes so his five number one jordan love and the offense had their best showing so far uh love goes 16 of 22 on passes during team periods while leading the offense to the one yard line for the end of half for a field goal. Need to punch that in for a touchdown. Then yeah, I'll, get your then shit I'll be in front of your Quay Walker's offseason centered on self improvement. So nice to get Quay Walker even better than he already was in his rookie year. Uh, number three. The Packers haven't been shy about giving uh, Lucas Van Ness everything he can handle. So kind of to what you said, looks like they're throwing the whole book at him. He's doing all right with it. Uh, Defense won competition period again, evidently, it says. And then are they not letting Barry call a place or what's the deal? How can they win if Barry's calling plays? Wait, say that again. If Joe Barry is calling plays, how are we winning th- anything? The defense, or yeah, are they letting like an intern do it for the training oh, period? Or what? I get what you're saying. I get the joke now. Yeah, it. My I, football... I actually don't hate Joe Barry that much, yeah. but like, yeah, he, my he uh, has some weird tendencies. 
my football brain needed to get turned back on. I was I thought you were calling out the offensive coordinator, but you were calling out the defense coordinator. Gotcha. Old Barry. All right. And then the last one, the Packers are off Sunday and then go to go on to pad. So it sounds like Monday they're putting the pads on. And so really nothing means anything right now because they haven't even been playing in pads. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, looking at just like the projected starters and stuff and stuff that I was seeing on ESPN today, it's our wide receivers. I think, I think that's where it looks like our offensive line is good. Our defense is good. Um, so we, I think we got two big holes in our, in, I shouldn't say two, because I think really all of our skill positions are a whole, except for Aaron Jones. I think everybody else is like unproven at the very least. I don't think we have any skill position players that I feel like, oh my God, these guys are going to light up the world, except for Aaron Jones. I think Aaron Jones, if you wanted to give him the ball 40 times a game, I'd be like, all right, I get it. Everybody else can't function right now, right? Um, and then I think our safeties are a problem. But I think our, our big concern is wide receivers and safeties. I think Love is a concern with the fact that he's a first-year quarterback, right? Like it's going to be his first year really playing. So that's going to be a concern. And you'd like to have him surrounded with veteran wide receivers rather than rookies and second-year guys. But we have what we have. And hopefully they're going to grow up together and be dominant long term. And is it like clear cut that I, I might have missed this and you might have brought this up, but Mason Crosby's gone. Anders Carlson is definitely our place kicker. Who I don't know for sure. For sure, I feel like Crosby signed somewhere, but Mason I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, then then the kicking position is going to be a question mark again. Oh so. yeah, yeah, which is the really a question mark for the first time in really a long time. Yeah, because at least you knew who was kicking. It does sound like there is a um, uh, so. a a punt like competition going on. So they. Sounds like, which would mean that there's two good punters that we're not like just, we don't have anybody good. All right. So here's a headline that comes up uh, when I Google Mason Crosby. So Green Bay Packers fan want Mason Crosby back after Anders Carlson goes one of six on Saturday. But I don't know, man. Kicking, I, shit. I, I guess I really don't know in that situation. Do we do we want to just change the page? Because if, if we flip that page, I can't remember. This is gonna be dumb. Uh then we got no nobody from the Super Bowl team because Bakhtiari was a little later. Is that right? Nobody left from the Super Bowl team. I mean, that's 12 years ago. That isn't that surprising. No, no, it's not. And if your kicker is your last guy, like that's not like, you know, not surprising either, right? Like that that guy has long longevity. And then him and Rodgers would have left the same year, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So I'd be fine turning the page and just finding the next kicker. Now, I do know that that is more challenging than it's in a lot of cases. It is just like finding a quarterback, right? Who are you going to replace him with? Not everyone can walk in there and make kicks. They just can't. Yeah. I'm going to do a better job of, of my roster, not just knowing uh, position players and stuff this year. So this is going to be our, our first preview of knowing everybody in I mean, everybody is a familiar name. So let's start with the offensive line, which I think, uh, uh, and this is a projected, I think. So I didn't uh, 
do a great job sourcing this. So at right tackle, we got Zach Tom. So familiar face. Yep. You know, do that. Second year ball. guy. Yep. Uh, right guard, John Runyon. Another. Yep, he's yep. back. Josh Myers at center. Back uh, again, second year guy. How old is Runyon? Um, Maybe it doesn't matter. Like, I just... So he was born in 97. So it's making me do, oh, 25. Doesn't make me do math. So he's pretty young, probably yeah. two or three years in the league. Yeah. And then we have Jenkins back at left guard. And I mean, he's moved all over the line. And then we, we have David Bakhtiari, but I feel like that's always like, do we have David Bakhtiari? I like, think that he, I think that he is locked in. He's going to, he's ready to go now. Okay, good. That's my personal like feeling on it. That if he misses some practices, that's fine. Like he is the vet of vets on our team at the moment. Like I think he might be the longest tenured Packer at this point. Yeah, I I mean I think he's got to be. Yeah, he, whatever. I'm I don't not on something where we can Google that real quick. But right. with the line being said, then we have Yash Neiman still that isn't starting, that's played significant amount of time in this. Right. And if he has to end up play, and if he ends up playing where Zach Tom's at, I mean, like that's not something that I'm upset about. That's no. I think I think I've made the argument that if you're gonna take a tackle with the first overall pick, you should call about Yash Neiman. Like you should do that. I don't think you're getting a first round pick out of them, but I'm just saying, like, if you're going to take a tackle with the first overall pick, right? Like, you could probably just so say you have the number one pick and the number thirty three pick. You could offer up the thirty three pick pretty easily if you're going to take it, right? Because you know that he can lock down the corner on left tackle in the NFL. You know that. It, like it's guaranteed. I know that he's older. He's like probably like 28. Yeah, but I don't even feel like I he, he's 27 and honestly I don't even feel like offensive line is surprisingly one of those positions where they play quite a bit longer than you would expect. Like yeah. I th yeah. I think if you have like a 35-year-old offensive lineman, you're not like we got an old like maybe a little bit, you're like, we got an old guy, but like, you know, you're like, maybe we can get two more years out of him type yep. deal. And I, I feel if like he, they have longevity in a way that a lot, a lot of positions don't have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Really running back, um, running back wide receivers. I think wide receivers getting over the age of like 31, 32, like doesn't exist. They just slow down too much. Like obviously there's guys that were exceptional and played till they were like 40, like Jerry Rice did. But for the most part, I think you get it 34, 35, 36, you start losing a step from when you were 22 and it just matters. Yeah. And Rice was a different dude. Like yeah. he played the game with his mind. I want to say as Probably his more biggest... than his body. Yeah, as his biggest weapon, as a young dude, even. I mean, he was extraordinarily talented, like fast, sharp route runner, stuff like that. Um, I'm curious to see, like, what his stats were from, like, 35 to 40, because, I mean, definitely. I don't like, think they were exceptional. No, no. But, I mean, an asset to have on your team is, like, the yeah, hardest and, like, working guy in the league. But And you see a lot of corners go from being, like, lockdown corners into like the safety position they move to a position that doesn't take the speed or like quite the same amount of athleticism as they age yeah um but yeah like roster wise i want to do a little bit better this year and i think i think we are going to um do you All want right, me so, to run so do down we have a, projected yeah, what, starters no, let's just – let's go with the depth at the offensive line position for right now. Okay, how yeah. How do you feel about that? So that, that's good. Um, I do want to throw the tweener in there with 
tight end position just because it's the easy one. And that's just such a big question mark is right now they got Musgrave, uh, Luke Musgrave starting there with Tucker Craft second and Joshua yep. DeGora taking, taking a step back. That was but one think, of my bold predictions. That, But I think DeGora is going to play more of like a fullback role. Mm-hmm. Right, like I think that he's not like a true tight end. He's more of like a fullback, H, not H back, like a like not necessarily a tight end is what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, guy that lines up in the backfield more than he does on the line. Yeah, or like in like a wing T ish. Yeah, you know, that, yeah. A step off a step off the line type deal. So that's okay. that's our offensive line breakdown. Is we got a pretty fucking good offensive line. So we that, only listed. That so eight. we only listed six offensive linemen and then three tight ends. Okay, so you want me to go Caleb just, Jones, just Sean Ryan, Jake Hansen, Royce Newman. So as the backups, I I don't know that I know offhand. I know Her Royce name, Newman. Yash Neiman for backups. But uh, yeah, I don't know yeah. Caleb Jones, Sean Ryan, or Jake Hansen. Did they draft Sean Ryan this year? Um, like he might be a rookie. You're a draft guy, but yes, they did out of UCLA. Um, he's 22. So no, they didn't. So he has, this is his second year of NFL experience. Oh, okay. So. All right. So, all right. So, like, we're going to, if we stay healthy on the offensive line, we should be fine. And even if we don't stay healthy, Neiman, Tom, and Jenkins can probably figure out what's going on there. Yeah, and I feel like there's been so much experience gained from Bakhtiari being such like a health question mark the last yeah. Two couple years. years is like Yash Neiman's play right tackle, left tackle. I don't know if he slipped into a guard spot, but it seems like Zach Tom has slid out to a tackle spot before. I could be wrong about that, but it seems like we got guys that have played all over the line, which honestly, I don't know how that could be anything but a good thing is that we've got guys that have played all over the offensive line. So sure, we're going to want them in their specific position that they're comfortable in, but these guys have dealt with shit when shit hit the fan. So, Right. And so, yeah, I think year in and year out, we have a solid offensive line. Now, Rodgers could have, like, helped that quite a bit because he was so quick with his release, but I think generally our offensive line is good. And I think if guys stay healthy, we'll be good to go on the offensive line. I like it. Is that, we going to wrap up uh, barking about the pack or no, that's running with the pack. We got to remember, we got to remember our segment names now too. That uh, <laughs> football season is getting close. Yeah, now that so. we're uh, got twenty eight thousand listeners on <laughs> or YouTube subscribers. Yep, yep, yep. Subscribers, not even like just listeners. Subscribers. We no, we only have nineteen thousand uh, subscribers. Twenty eight, huh. twenty eight thousand viewers of the last one that we put out. So yeah, yeah. I don't like. I guess I don't know the human that like subscribes to a a YouTube channel. I don't understand that human. I didn't until we started doing this. And then we Me get too. guys, same, guys same in our deal. DMs like, oh, subscribe to yours if you subscribe. So that's probably like 10 of ours. So like more of our uh, maybe at least like it might be like 15, <laughs> which is fine. I don't care. But yeah. if we I mean get the views from them, but I like I on YouTube, I like I never even signed in until we, I had never signed into YouTube until same, same. I started doing a podcast. And now I have two, so we get like an extra, extra one. Well, the banging on the drum and then mine. So yeah, yep. so I guess yep. we only get an extra one for that. Right. But do you want to drive fast and turn left for us here, Mike? 
Yeah, so I will. Um, so last week, Sunday, um, Martin Truex Jr. took third. Um, I don't, I didn't catch how many points he had. Ended up in third. And then this week, just to, uh, earlier today, ended up seventh. So back on his like winning ways. So he goes, what was it like? First, third, seventh. So he just won the Crans 301 race or whatever. And the, which, kind of like gave me a little chuckle when I read which actual race it was and it was called like the crayons like me. like back to school crayons yeah I think so I, I don't know what it is. yeah the ones that that taste like Crayola crayons pretty good okay okay yeah no I like that that's the way it seemed to me I could be wrong about that but I did think that that was kind of funny he won that one and then third seventh I can deal with that yeah so he's got 744 points, which he's leading uh, the Cup Series in points. But we need to get that one more. We need to catch Checkers one more time to catch that boy, uh, William Byron, that has been catching the most Checkers this year. Uh, he's won four races. We've won three races. I'm going to start using three. But we're tied in top five finishes with eight and then we have uh more top 10 finishes with 12 to william byron's um 11 so we have one more top 10 finish than him um kyle bush is nipping at our heels a little bit but honestly the next closest guy in points is denny hamlin but he needs to get a race. Whatever. I'm not going to overanalyze this. I start seeing numbers. I must like numbers a little bit. So, like I must have that uh, baseball number thing in there. Cause so Denny I, Hamlin just won a race last weekend. Okay. He won, Truex got third and he just won. Okay. And I think I can quick sort these. So uh we're in first with 744 points. Denny Hamlin in second, 705. William Byron, 701. So, I mean, we're 39 points ahead of the closest person. And we still don't know what a point is. <laughs> I have no idea. I assume that the top five finishes, <laughs> top 10 finishes matter. Leading for laps, wins. I don't know. I have no clue. I don't know how much I like uh, leading laps as being a point, though. I feel like it's got to be all about the finish, but yeah, yeah no, I mean, yeah, because it's like giving a team like points in the standings for scoring the first points of the game. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, they I do. They ran out fast, so so I think them- hockey kind of does that though. They get points in their standings for points. Yeah, but they right. get points like win, loss, draw. No, because they don't draw anymore. So win loss and then like goals. If you, no, they, there's nothing with goals. I mean, there's tiebreakers with goals, but like there's no points for goals. It's the same as football. It's like if it comes down to it and you have the same amount of whatever your division, your division record, this record, that record. Yeah, that, that and then it comes down to points, points is yeah like uh later one but are you ready for my brain drain that oh i am excited about a brain drain here so i keep hitting that we have uh santana on our team now just like uh just like the singer and i'm changing the lyrics from maria maria reminds me of a uh, uh west, west side, side story. story to Dinger, dinger, uh, reminds me of a Midwest story. Dinger, dinger, huh? Okay. Do, like do, 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 dinger, dinger, <laughs> reminds me of a Midwest story. But anyway, isn't, isn't there the score, like, uh, the scorekeeper girl that is at all the Brewer games that, like, it could be that? What's her oh. name? Front row, Amy. Front row, Amy. Well, it could just be Amy, right? <laughs> Amy, Amy. 
<laughs> remind yeah. me of them. But do you know why the Midwest is called the Midwest? Nope. I, I can't say that I have like a real answer. I just assume that it's between the East and the West. And so it's the middle of the West. All right. So I know there's a lot of people out there, me included, because when I was making up my song, it made me think about the Midwest again. And that is kind of like a stupid name for a large portion of the country. So let me look at this map for you guys real quick. So the Midwest contains Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. Um, okay. So Kansas is, yeah, I, I guess I'll give it that. See, and that's like where I think the dispute is because I think when you get out to the West, like I feel like Colorado is, is like the mis, most misplaced state. Like not say if you're like filling out stuff, but we've went over it before. It's like, it's kind of, south ish like it's central. i think part of, i think part of colorado is definitely south yeah i mean if you're touching new mexico and arizona like ah, yeah, yeah yeah whatever it gets but i think i'm gonna call this one instead of the brain drain today as if you didn't know now you know sucker um, so in the 1850s, Americans tried to grapple with those new territories and settled on Middle West because the territory sat between the southwest of Oklahoma and Texas and the northwest of the Dakota Territory. That is, Americans understood the Midwest as a place west of the Mississippi, but between north and south. Did that make sense at all? Because it didn't make sense to me. Nope. So, I mean, so if you're including Illinois, I mean, even Wisconsin, right? So we fall east of the Mississippi. Yeah. Right? So Indiana. That is Ohio, Americans Michigan. understood the Midwest as a place west of the Mississippi, but between north and south. Which I don't know, man. So I, like, think... I actually think the Midwest, I think that a good way to describe the Midwest would be the northern half of the United States that falls between the Appalachian Mountains. And the Rockies. And yeah, and the Rockies, I'm sorry. Right. So between the mountains, right? So east of the Appalachians is all the eastern United States. And the West Appalachians or the Rockies. West of the Rockies is all the West, from like Colorado all the way out to the coast. Okay. And so because the Appalachian Mountains run through like Pennsylvania, even though it's on the east side, they fall in. The east. And then everything coming this way from Pennsylvania is Midwest. So, right, that's like Ohio, Indiana, Michigan. Okay, so I'm kind of zoning out on you a little bit. Can you reiterate that one okay. more time? Okay, so the Midwest falls between the Appalachian Mountains and the Rocky Mountains. And okay. then it falls in the northern half of the United States. Yeah, so, no, that, that's a good cut of what so, it actually is. Yeah. And I'll give the, uh, it's whatever the Missouri Compromise was, right? So Missouri is in the north because that uh, latitude, latitude line. The right? Mason-Dixon? Yeah, fell, and they fall above that. So they couldn't have slaves. And then the below that to the south, they could not, or they could have slaves and then they could not. And so that's the difference differentiate for me between north and south in the united states 
Okay. It's, it's yeah, slave owning versus non slave owning states in like the 1850s. Yeah. I don't know. I just think it needs to be redrawn a little bit. But what do you consider Kentucky? I would South, I would assume. And Kentucky is damn near parallel with Colorado. Yeah. So I, th- I so I don't think that Western states are considered the South. Texas, no. is a, Texas is as far West as you can go and consider something the South. You're doing good. It's like you're looking at this picture. All I am right. not. I am not. What about West Virginia? I feel like they're actually relatively far North, right? But I assume that they fall in the South. They are also in the south, and but they shouldn't be in the they shouldn't be in the south because I believe, if I remember my U.S. history correctly, that the reason we even have West Virginia and not just Virginia is because they seceded from Virginia because they didn't want to own slaves. Okay, so West Virginia was like the good ones. I just got a cockroach. I'm pretty happy about that, but it is pretty gross. It's a yeah. gross scene uh, over at the house right so, now. So, like, maybe I'm, like, I know Virginia was in the South, right? Because that's where um, General Lee was from, was Virginia, somewhere in Virginia, where I think West Virginia basically said, we're not in on this, like, we're out. All right, we're going to secede from you. We don't want to. I don't know if that's, like, like, the right term that you use, but I'm pretty sure that, like, that's how West Virginia was formed interesting state right there so if you had to say what your most underrated state is or what would it be or what's your best what do you think the best state off the top of your head is other than wisconsin that's easy one one yeah yeah that one like no doubt it's Wisconsin, right? Um, I don't know. Like, I don't ever really consider anything else in the Midwest to be, like, anywhere near on par with Wisconsin, even though they're all essentially the same. Like, I don't consider them to be, this, like, anywhere near us. Yeah, I, I think you got I'm, so... I'm de- in, in general, I'm dismissive of the South, right? Like, I just assume that they're not good. The West, I feel like, for the most part, are kind of like, um, like yuppies, like the people who just think that they're better. I think if I was, if I wanted to move to a <laughs> state, if we were like uh, not international, I guess I think that man. about the Northeast too, is that they think they're better than. Yeah, so the Northeast, I would say, doesn't appeal to me at all. But I could find space Maine, everywhere Maine, else. Like Maine, I think it's I probably could deal with sweet. Maine. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I can deal with Maine. Um, in the Northeast, that'd probably be it. Western Pennsylvania might be okay, which is more like nothingness, right? Things that I like. I don't know, maybe I, I'm going to go with like a mountain city in in like Montana or Idaho, I think. Wyoming, okay. maybe. Okay. And One I of those would, three states, I think, I think is where I would settle out is go west. I'd I end think, up west. Yeah. I think the south is very underrated. I, I, I think, think you're probably right. And I know in my mind that I shouldn't judge them quite the way that I do. And North Carolina might be Ooh, yeah, yeah. the best state you got mountains you got ocean you got everything like beautiful mountains as well um to boot so if i had to pick one from each place i think i would go north carolina in the south wisconsin in the midwest probably go with you with maine in the northeast because if if you're gonna make it suck, like at least have some lobster. Um, yeah, and I like your Wyoming or Montana pick because I think Colorado gets too much play. Like Colorado 
is on everybody's radar as a very cool state. But I yeah. think I think your Wyoming is probably just as beautiful, if not more beautiful, with and less people. with less people. And I think that covers it. Like that's that's all. Yeah, and I like I did make it to Utah this last week too so i went through nevada and then you drive north to arizona from nevada and then uh into utah which was a very weird i thought anyway i don't you don't you don't like utah is very beautiful too where we were at oh yeah oh yeah utah's yeah. underrated that but that's like a good they, underrated yeah, they don't sell real beer like 3.2 or 4 percent beer is like the highest you can get yeah, that does knock them down a peg for sure. Yeah, so like I think I can buy beer, like real beer wherever I go, right? Like I can buy like 14% alcohol beer in a grocery store. It doesn't even tell me, right? It's not even like a thing. Yeah, this stuff 14% will make is you... really, really high, right? But yeah, this stuff will make um, you crap your pants if you drink. But like ten of them. I do I go to Minnesota and I can't even buy real beer in a grocery store. Right? So they only sell three, two beer in grocery stores. So I think there's probably some laws in these places that I would not enjoy. Oh, yeah. I just found out in Florida, which probably has to be the skydiving capital. Eh, maybe not. Uh, but I would assume it's one of the better places to skydive in our country. And it's illegal for women to skydive in Florida. I mean, they don't enforce it, but it did is. It, did it's they like, like one of those laws just recently like, pass this law, or is this like an ancient law? You you would think like with some of the shit that's getting passed down in Florida right now, but but no. But anyways, do you got any more with the brain drain? We'll stop no, being too political. So I I could give us a brain drain, something that I've recently discovered on my computer that has like made my life better. Right. It's okay. like more of a trick. It's not like so. Uh, yeah, th this isn't brain drain. This is if you didn't know, now you know, sucker. Oh, yeah. So now this is a, this might be good for that. So the Windows key on a PC, and then you hit over when you're in like and it splits your screen in half. You hit yep. the left arrow. So this is something I recently discovered. And now I essentially have four screens in my work computer instead of just two. And that I really enjoy it. Oh yeah. You're you're living. I mean, you just you just caught up. But yeah, that's that's what I do. That's what I've been doing our whole podcast is breaking my screen into four screens. Okay. I got you on the right. I got our notes on the left of the right screen. And then I got two screens up on my other screen. And this is one I don't use as much, but this is what another little like trick that came in like the same time and i don't use this one but at work like it can be helpful where i can switch desktop i think it's like a task key and i can't remember which key that was like which ones i gotta hit in order to get there but like you can have a whole different desktop so you can have all your stuff running on one desktop and then have like a completely different desktop which doesn't have any of your anything that's running for your like your internet even on that like it doesn't pull up at all Ooh, and so i might i might need to figure that out i might have yeah. to google that right and so it's like a like desktop to desktop like so it'd be like almost like starting up a whole new computer and running it over on this side like or not that. even on the side but it like changes out your whole thing so everything in the background is kind of like hidden or whatever yeah, and then you can pull up. I found okay. that in the same like thing too. And so, but that one I don't use as much, but. And if you didn't know, now you know, sucker. <laughs> All right. I think that will wrap up our show. As always, thank you for the support. We love you guys. We appreciate that. Like, subscribe, download, share. Like I said, even if you don't like us, talk shit about us, share us. Because then we look at these little numbers and we feel kind of good about ourselves. And our numbers are going up. So hop on this train now. Yeah. So like if you're, if you're not on this train, 
before September, you can't say you were here from the beginning. I think we uh, should put out a challenge to get our most downloads in a month, which shouldn't be too hard, but maybe, maybe that's, maybe we okay. can do something like that, but. So that's a challenge for us or a challenge for other people or like, what's the, what's the end goal and what's the like. For the people, people who consider us, us, like the, the people in there, but whatever. We'll figure that out next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll forget about that before next week. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> all right. Take us home, Mike. All right. For all you suckers, Dalton, Martin, the Brewers, the Badgers, the Packers, or the Bucks, you can eat our shorts. Roll it.